Let's go. All right. Hey, thank you everyone uh, for joining. Uh, my name is Harshal Pimpalkote. I'm a uh, product marketing manager at Aten Networks. And uh, the topic for today's discussion is uh, dynamic L4 to L7 services for uh, OpenStack Cloud data centers. So we are roughly 15 minutes. Uh, what, what we're going to talk about is uh, some of the challenges that our uh, current data center services face uh, in, in terms of uh, legacy approaches. Uh, we're going to take that, uh, take, take that as a basis and then talk about uh, what, are, what are some of the uh, approaches that we can take as we move towards a cloud data center. Uh, this includes uh, dynamic service provisioning, includes automation, uh, integration with uh, orchestration. And uh, we're going to close it out with uh, the ATEN Networks OpenStack integration. So that's, uh, that's briefly the agenda. Uh, I think we, we have uh, 15 minutes, and we may have some time left over for questions. Uh, we have our entire team over here, so we can, we can take questions as, uh, as, as, as they come up uh, at the end of the session. So uh, with, with that said, uh, let's, let's, uh, before I jump into, into the topic of discussion, oh, what is, who is Aten Networks? What do we do? Uh, what are our products? So uh, Aten Networks provides uh, products and solutions so that, uh, uh, that allow customers to accelerate, uh, secure, and optimize their network applications. And uh, this is done through uh, our products, which are in the realm of ADC, uh, CGN, and TPS. So the ADC provides, or the application delivery controller provides uh, acceleration, performance, and security. Uh, the TPS product line provides a threat protection systems, or, or the perimeter security. And uh, the CGN uh, provides a service provider uh, with, with the CGN capability. So that's, that's roughly the, uh, the, um, the product line. All of these products run on the ACOS platform. That is, that is the, uh, in my mind, that is uh, one of the key innovations that A10 Networks brings to the market. And we're going to talk about it in a, in a couple of slides as, uh, as we cover the discussion. Uh, but ACOS platform with the shared memory architecture and the flexible, uh, uh, flexible traffic accelerator uh, provides uh, efficient utilization of multi-core CPU architectures. So that's, that's something that we would like to talk about today. And, and finally, with, with these products and solutions, what we are able to do is, is provide uh, IT uh, provide support for multiple IT delivery models. So if you're looking at dedicated network uh, networks uh, in, in case of private clouds, uh, we have high performance appliances that can uh, work as a virtual chassis to provide a, a single solution. Uh, we have solutions for managed hosting environments where you can uh, leverage some of our multi-tenancy characteristics, the application delivery partitions to uh, come up with a managed hosting solution. And, and finally, the topic for discussion today is uh, cloud IaaS. So we have a, a cloud services architecture that we recently launched in, launched in January that can be used for uh, cloud infrastructure as a service offerings. So that's, uh, that's the brief uh, background on ATEN networks. And, and here's a quick uh, company snapshot, if you may. Uh, ATEN uh, networks was uh, recently listed on NYSE. So we, we went IPO roughly two months ago. And uh, it has been a phenomenal time. As you can see, our, uh, our customer growth has, been, uh, has, has tripled in the past three years. Uh, our revenues have uh, almost tripled in the last four years. So uh, it's, it's been a great ride, very interesting times. And, and we hope to deliver even more innovation as a public company. So that's, that's ATEN Networks for you and the, and the products. Moving along, or, or rather jumping into the topic, what are the challenges facing uh, the industry today in terms of L4, L7 services? So if you, if you briefly uh, take a look at it, the L4, L7 services that, that exist today are static, they're inflexible, and they're ma they have to be manually provisioned. So they're inflexible by design, and, and since they, are, they have to be manually provisioned, it, has, it takes a significant overhead. The change management can be days or even weeks before you can get a single change implemented in, in, the, in your L4 to L7 services. So here, here's a quick example that I'm, I'm sharing with you. Uh, what you have over here is a server load balancer running to some QoS parameters, uh, a WAF, 
and, and a DDoS solution on top of that. If you wanted to take out even a single element from, from this chain and move it elsewhere in your data center, it, like I said, it could take days or weeks. Uh, this is a fundamental problem, a fundamental challenge uh, that hinders movement towards cloud. What, what you really want in a cloud is a dynamic service provisioning. And that's, that's, one of the, that's one of the key areas that we're going to talk, touch upon today through uh, dynamic service chaining. You also need automation and scalability. And, and you need automation for uh, a quick reaction or, or agile uh, environment. You need scale as, as you leverage economies of scale. And, and the goal here is to turn around things quickly for the administrator. So that's, that's the premise. That's, that's what we're approaching this uh, from. And if you, if you contrast this with what's, what's required, so, we, so you have isolated services on one side, like I described to you earlier. You have silos of services. You have monoliths of services that cannot be easily uh, tweaked or easily changed. Uh, as we move towards the cloud, yeah. dynamic services is taking over. And this, is, uh, this, is, this manifests itself in a resource pool of services. Uh, for uh, for those, of you, those of you who might be aware, one of the five key attributes of the cloud is resource pooling. That's how you achieve uh, a, a very efficient utilization of your resources, whether it's services, whether it's infrastructure, whether it's people. So with, uh, like with everything else, with services, we are trying to resource pool them into a single pool so that these services now can be consumed by the applications as they require part of the application, the, uh, part of the service, entire service, or maybe uh, they want to spin it up or spin it down. So that is the dynamic aspect of services that we are referring to here when we talk about dynamic L4 to L7 services. So how does this take shape? This takes shape through policy-driven infrastructure. Uh, what, what we envision is the business needs will be converted to a policy infrastructure. They'll be converted to rules or policies that will be directly fed into the private or public cloud infrastructure. And from there on, you get a simplified uh, demand, uh, simplified on-demand consumption model so that your applications can self-service themselves or the IT administrators can automate this to the next level. Uh, also, we are looking at a multi-tenant, a heavily multi-tenant architecture. So, uh, even with private clouds, uh, as lines of businesses go into separate uh, tenant, uh, behave as separate tenants, we are looking at a very heavily uh, multi-tenant architecture. And, and finally, uh, to leverage the economies of scale associated with cloud, we are, we are providing with scale-out architecture. So that's, that's how we envision, we, we briefly talked about the problem, and this is how we envision things changing as uh, innovations take place and, and we move toward a more dynamic L4 to L7 services. All right, so just wanted to share with you this quick animation. Uh, what you see over here is uh, multiple tenants, multiple cloud tenants show up on your network and your orchestration platform is provisioning the, the, the compute, the layer two, layer three networking, and, and the storage piece of it, right? Uh, the cloud orchestration platform may communicate with any uh, SDN controller and push down aspects such as uh, VLANs, gateways, or QoS parameters to the layer two, layer three network, right? To the, to the SDN network fabric. What's missing in this picture is the dynamic L4 to L7 service chaining. Organizations today, need a way to automate and scale their L4 to L7 services and, 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 and leverage the same benefits that they're getting from the orchestration platforms for their layer two, layer three networks, for their compute, for their storage. So that's, that's the gap that Aten Networks is trying to fill over here with, with our vision and with our products. All right, so, so I briefly touched upon dynamic service chaining. So what, what is dynamic service chaining? It, it, it has been, uh, uh, I, I was watching a couple of other presentations right before me, and uh, it, it has been a term that has been used more recently in the past. So dynamic service chaining is, is, a, is a broad term. 
and and it can uh, apply in in many areas and in, 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 in manifest in manifest in different forms. So for for us, dynamic service chaining allows our customers to spin up or spin down services, to consolidate services, uh, to share services across different applications, and also uh, to, uh, to automatically provision them when, when a new application comes along. So that is, that is the basic uh, scope of dynamic service chaining as, as it relates to us. So what you see over here is uh, a multi-tenant architecture with uh, Coke and Pepsi and, and other tenants. And uh, the Coke, Coke is using security as, as a service. Pepsi is using IPv6 as a service for its applications. And wh what our premise is, these, these services should be, should, should be able to permeate across boundaries, across boundaries of uh, governance, across boundaries of control, across boundaries of networks. So, uh, so, as, so as the application moves, you have a truly virtualized and a mobile infrastructure. And the underlying operating system, in this case, uh, the application gateway operating system, should be able to support this, this kind of mobility, this kind of portability. And, and finally, the platform, it, it should be supported on the physical appliances, on the virtual appliances, and also on the industry standard hypervisors. So that's, that's a view of uh, dynamic service chaining as, as we see it. So just, just to summarize it, right? Uh, what are the design requirements uh, for L4 to L7 services? Uh, I roughly categorize these into three buckets. There's agility, uh, there's scale, and there's reduced total cost of ownership. Uh, agility today is, is table stakes. Uh, for those of you who may have attended yesterday's keynote speech, uh, customers used to look at fast, good, and cheap. What they're looking for now is fast, fast, and fast. If you give them fast, they can convert it into cheap, they can convert it into good. What, what they're looking for is an agile infrastructure, an agile policy-driven infrastructure. So uh, agile service delivery is, is uh, one of the key uh, design, design concepts that we have at ATEN Networks uh, that provides for simplified consumption model, uh, programmability, and we, and we talked about orchestration and uh, SDN integration, but that's, that's just one aspect. As applications move across governance domains, and as, as services move across governance domains, you need uh, a portability mechanism, which is API-driven, so that you can get that kind of agility across different uh, private as well as public cloud data centers. The other is scale. Uh, we are going to, we are, one of the fundamental, fundamental reasons we are going to the cloud, to public or private cloud, is for, uh, to leverage the economies of scale. And uh, application delivery at scale is, is a key uh, uh, item. Uh, you have to linearly scale with performance. And, and I'm going to talk in a bit about how the ACOS platform allows you to do that. Uh, also, you need consistency of services. So you should be able to en enforce SLAs for your security, for your compliance as time passes. And you need uh, reduced total cost of ownership. So you need metered consumption uh, as well as simplified management. So the A-Cloud services architecture, we, we took all of these design uh, precepts to the table and, and created uh, the A-Cloud services architecture. This is something that we launched earlier this year. It's a portfolio of products and solutions that provides our customers with the cloud offerings, the, the L4 to L7 uh, services offerings necessary in a private or a public cloud infrastructure. And, and these are based on our hardware and virtual appliances. They are based on a pay-as-you-go model uh, to reduce the total cost of ownership. And we have integrated, or we have integrations with uh, SDN and orchestration platforms, including OpenStack. So I'm going to talk about the OpenStack uh, uh, integration in a bit. So in interest of time, uh, I'm just going to quickly refer to this. So with the appliances, you can have different uh, IT delivery models. So you can have a dedicated data center, or you could have a managed hosting, or a cloud infrastructure as a service. And, and this, is, this is the one that we are referring to over here. The, the vThunder appliances or the virtual appliances uh, allow that kind of mobility and, and, and the scale and agility necessary for, uh, for a cloud infrastructure as a service offering, along with the pay-as-you-go licensing. 
So moving forward, one of, one of the key innovations that I described to you was the ACOS platform from Aten Networks. Uh, there are really two components over here. One is the flexible traffic accelerator that uh, evenly distributes traffic, uh, evenly distributes, dis distributes flows across all the CPUs. As we move to a multi-CPU architecture, it is, it is uh, critically important that we utilize all of the cores, all of the CPUs evenly. And, and the A10 flexible uh, traffic accelerator is, is the key component in the ACOS operating system that does this. And the second piece is the, the shared memory architecture. So uh, for in, in case of A10 products, in case of ACOS, we have a single shared memory architecture. So we, we eliminate the need for any IPC communication, which can be process intensive. And you have a consistent view of the memory so that you can apply the policies quickly. You can, you can do so in an agile manner. So that's, that's the ACOS platform that we have uh, powering all of our appliances and all of our A-Cloud offerings. As far as the licensing models are concerned, uh, we have uh, both uh, a perpetual license that you can, uh, that you can buy once and, and use it forever, or you could have a uh, monthly license, more like your uh, cell phone plans, or a utility license, just like your utility bills or your electricity bills. So you have a RBM and a UBM, and this, this forms the basis for your pay-as-you-go in the uh, cloud infrastructure environment. We are also available on the AWS marketplace, so you could, you could uh, deploy a vThunder um, on the AWS marketplace as well. So th those are the billing options. And these are my last, last two slides. Uh, as far as OpenStack integration is concerned, uh, what we have done is we have used the Elbas Neutron extension that you see over here uh, and, and the uh, Elbas Advanced uh, Service Plugin to insert the A10 Elbas driver. And, and by doing so, now you can leverage all, all the different, or you can use all the different appliances that I mentioned, the vThunder, the, the hybrid, and the physical appliances in an OpenStack environment. And, and the goal again over here is, is to provide uh, the same functionality, the same dynamic L4 to L7 services in an OpenStack environment. So in, in, uh, how does this all look when, when you have the OpenStack piece, when you have the SDN piece, uh, when you have uh, the virtual as well as the physical appliances? I'm, I'm just giving you an example over here. Uh, so you have multiple tenants. You could use your physical appliances, uh, get into the SDN fabric. Uh, you have a vThunder sitting on a vSwitch, and, and you get the server load balancing functionality over there. And uh, you move from there to the WAF, or to the vSwitch again, where you get the WAF functionality. So you have uh, three different uh, ADCs in your service chain. Uh, that's that's one, one aspect of it. If, if you look at the other service chain, you have a hybrid appliance sitting on your left, providing you with uh, the, the server load balancing capabilities again as the traffic goes into the SDN fabric. So that's, that's the overall uh, uh, view as, as we see it from an ATEN perspective. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, let us know. Uh, we are in the booth right there in booth number 313. We also have an OpenStack demo that's going on, so we'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you for your time.